Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Shaila Kamal, working as consultant obstetrician and gynecologist in Tertiary Care Hospital. In my previous video, I have just given the introduction to the instruments of dilatation and curettage. But now I will demonstrate the scale, uh, scale of uh, dilatation and curettage. First of all, uh, when you have to perform, what could be the indications for dilatation and curettage? that could be diagnostic and that could be therapeutic. For the diagnostic dilatation and curettage, abnormal vaginal bleeding, irregular vaginal bleeding or the heavy, heavy menstrual bleeding, there could be the polyps, there could be the in the pregnant uterus, incomplete miscarriage, postmenopausal bleeding and uh, in, along with incomplete miscarriage, missed miscarriage, molar pregnancy and retained product of conception could be the indication of dilatation and curettage for um, diagnostic as well as the therapeutic purpose. So uh, as I always, always uh, raise, told my students, when you start any skill demonstration, you have to start with uh, like ruling of fulfilling all the prerequisites and ruling out all the contraindications. What could be the prerequisites? The prerequisites will be after explaining all the risks and benefits you have to take the informed consent from the couple after the counseling then uh, decide about the anesthesia what kind of anesthesia like general anesthesia or the local anesthesia in the saddle block the dilatation and curettage can be performed uh, you have to give the mesoprostol uh, 200 microgram sublingual or vaginally 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure for cervical softening uh, and the patient when you have fulfilled all the prerequisites and you have taken the informed consent the two assistants are required for the assistance of dilatation and curettage patient should be in lithotomy position and bladder should be empty uh, after the gowning gloving and draping you have to uh, and taking the informed consent you have to clean the vulva with the antiseptic solution in the Please be charging, please. In for uh, you have to clean the vulva for the antiseptic solution with the three swabs. You have to put inside the vulva and in the rotatory motion, you have to come out in this way, like in this way from the uh, inner side to the outer side. You have to whole uh, vagina should be clean and then you have to clean the vulva. After the cleaning, you have to perform the uh, vaginal, uh, you have to perform the bimanual examination. You have to put your two fingers in the posterior fornix of vagina and perform the bimanual examination. When you have to do the bimanual examination, you have you has to assess the size of the uterus as well as the version of the uterus. When you have uh, to assess the size and the version, you can avoid the perforation of the uterus as well as you have to comment on the adenexa as well. Doing the bimanual examination under anesthesia and emptying the bladder, you have to predict the posterior vaginal wall with the sim speculum and ask your assistants to visualize uh, to hold this to uh, visualize the cervix. This is this step is of visualization visualization of the cervix. You can see here. I have tried to visualize the cervix in this dummy. So the assistants assistant will hold this. Uh, same speculum with the uh, to retract the posterior vaginal wall. Now I have to hold the interior lip of the cervix with the uh, tenaculum in the non-pregnant uterus. In the non-pregnant uterus, you have to hold it with the tenaculum. You can see here the cervix. Now you have to hold it with the tenaculum to visualize the cervix. Now the cervix is visualized. You have to give a little bit of traction so that the angle show it here so that the angle between the uterus and the cervix is reduced about 75 degree and uh, perforation can be avoid avoided. When you have holded the interior lip of the cervix, now you have to do the sounding of the uterus. As I have to already show you the uterine sound. You have to insert the uterine sound and assess the uterine uterine size and the version of the uterus. It is antiverted uterus, and you can have see the size of the uterus on the uterine 
sound if the uterus is non pregnant pregnant you have to use the tenaculum if uterus is pregnant you you can use this uh, wall cellum and you can give fraction with the wall cellum as well as you can also use this sponge holding forceps after this you have to do the dilatation for the dilatation i will choose an appropriate size dilator this dilator seems to be okay along that of along with the cervix as the cervix is softened already with the mesoprostol here is the 7 in 8 6 and 7 in 8 number i will hold with the thumb and index finger and put it inside the cervix and my index finger will be on the vulva and i will do the to and fro motion now it seems to be a larger number i will try a smaller number one smaller one this is 5 and 6 I will try with the five, and I will hold with the thumb and index finger, and my middle finger will be on the vulva, and this one is going inside. I will do a back and forth motion, and will retain here for some time so that the adequate dilatation can be acquired, can be achieved. Uh, with the adequate dilatation, uh, after achieving the adequate dilatation, you can go for evacuation of the uterine cavity. But you have to be careful for one thing. when you use you don't go up till the fundus of the uterus otherwise it can create the uterine perforation so be careful because these are the metallic instruments so be careful and hold it with the index and middle finger and your uh, index and uh, finger and the thumb and the middle finger should be over the vulva so that you can have a controlled pressure then uh, after that you have to evacuate the uterus if it is the uh, pregnant uterus you have to use uh, adequate size of the sponge holding forceps i can you can uh, use the uh, remove the retained product of conception with sponge holding forceps as well after the removing of these you have to use the uterine curettage use this uterine curettage to curate all the wall of like i will insert and i will do the curettage of all the walls of the uterus how you can know you have to hold it like that and you can go inside and you have to do the curettage you can use first the smoother one then the sharper one and you have to uh, use in this back and forth motion of all the uh, you trying cavity then after that uh, how you can confirm the uterus is empty you can confirm it confirm the uterus is empty by when the pink froth is coming when there is a gritting sensations when you are using this like uh, uh, this uh, small uh, this uh, curate and you are doing the curettage on all the walls of the uterus so you have the greeting sense gritty sensation on all the uh, on the walls of the uterus there will be the pink froth will be coming out the patient will feel the crampy pain due to the uterine uh, contraction and uh, there could be the like uh, uh, uterus will be contracted and you will feel the uterus is contracting on your instrument this is how you can confirm that the uterus is empty now uh, when you have empty the uterus you have removed the tenaculum and the, you have to remove the all the instruments like uh, sim speculum and then patient should be informed about and clean all the uh, clean the vagina along with that uh, vagina as well as the vulva along with that these uh, sponge holding forceps and these sponges after that when you have formed this you have to inform the patient what could happen after that there could be the crampy abdominal there could be the crampy abdominal pain vaginal bleeding uh, send the specimen for histopathology there are certain complications of the dilatation and curettage uh, these are the vaginal heavy vaginal bleeding uh, there could be the foul smelling vaginal discharge uterine perforation post procedure infection intrauterine adhesion but in severe cases there could be fever nausea vomiting and uh, foul smelling along with that the foul smelling discharge follow up should be after 3 weeks do the documentation and uh, give the date of histopathology when you have received and patient will come with that histopathology report to you and then you can prescribe the further treatment thank you so much for watching this video uh, for watching my video please subscribe so so that you can watch all the videos in the future which i'm going to upload thank you so much.